This is Ample Forth. Ample Forth is a Newspeak framework for uh, supporting live literate programming. In this case, we see Ample Forth embedded in the actual presentation software that you, we're using to to show our slides. Uh, but Ample Forth is adaptable and can be incorporated in in different settings uh, as long as they're web-based. So we can see essentially the entry point of a uh, very basic Newspeak IDE that runs in the browser. And uh, we can evaluate Newspeak code if we go to workspaces. We can evaluate things. As you can see, this is live. Uh, the results are links. So if we click on this link, we find that we have an instance of class number. We can click on that and find the number class. We can browse its code. And uh, one of the interesting things we can do, we can press Inspect Presenter. And this gives us an object inspector on the actual object that is responsible for the UI that's being presented. So now we see that before we were looking at class number, and it was being displayed by an instance of class presenter. And if we click on that, we get to class class presenter, which is the actual code that we're using to display classes. Uh, if you want to compare that, again, the point of liveness is to, to get uh, from desired behavior, uh, from, from a specification to behavior and back in a very tight, short feedback loop. So if you compare this to a mainstream tool, imagine you are using something conventional like Eclipse and you wanted to change some of the UI behavior, uh, you'd have to go and look at the source code, try and figure out where in that code base somewhere was the code that actually controlled the, the visual thing that you were trying to change, change that, build the application, run it, bring it to the state where it displayed that particular UI and see if that had the desired effect, and if not, you can restart. Uh, this, of course, is the opposite of live. This is death or worse than death. And so here, in contrast, you can essentially get from the displayed widget to the code that's, that created it uh, pretty much immediately. Uh, now that we have that, we can go and see, for example, heading definition is the, something that controls the definition of the heading in the class presenter. So we can change that a bit. Let's say something like this. We can accept that. Now if this was as live as we'd want, there's still room for improvement, then this would have changed immediately. Sometimes that's a double-edged sword. That's not necessarily what you always want. Uh, but once we've made the change, if we press on this again, we can see that it indeed has changed the, has had the desired effect and changed the code, right? So we've actually we're running a programming environment inside the presentation manager and editing that that tool from within itself, which uh, should be fairly standard, but sadly isn't. So uh, you can see also why we didn't choose this particular color scheme to begin with. So let's go and change that back. Uh, that's not what it was. It was this, I believe. And we accept that, and we can go back, and now we've got that fixed. Uh, you can always go to the home screen of the uh, of the IDE here, and uh, we can see all the sources that we have by opening up a namespace. Uh, we may talk a bit about namespaces in a moment. Uh, there are sub namespaces, like for example, the icons here are in a sub namespace which is just full of, of images, so it's not all that interesting. But uh, there is a hierarchical structure to the namespaces, which will prove to be important. Uh, so I can, we can always go back to the home screen from everywhere. Uh, we can interact with the surrounding JavaScript. I mean, if we click about the system, that brings up a, a modal interface from the browser with a with a message and this tells us that we're at uh, version 1984 which I expect we'll keep for as long as we can and so that's uh, that's the basics of how Ampleforth works 
Uh, one of the nice things, of course, is that we can look at Ampleforth itself from within uh, Ampleforth. So this is the Ampleforth application. And uh, it sets itself up. We don't really care what the details are, but this is the code that actually starts up Ampleforth and, and does its thing. Uh, if we go back to the namespace, we can look at the Ampleforth embedder, which is closer to the actual code that, that really has the effect of, of how Ampleforth works when it starts. It runs a few methods like process evaluators, process mini browsers, etc. If we look at, say, process evaluators, uh, that basically iterates through all the DOM elements that have class evaluator and uh, basically takes those, those divs in the DOM tree and replaces them with an embedded hopscotch window that opens a particular kind of, of widget that basically is a, a live evaluator very similar to the one we saw for workspaces. Uh, Mini browser does the same thing except it creates a home subject that's the the, the widget that uh, is basically the home screen of the ID that's basically this thing. So it basically operates by swapping out tagged elements in the DOM with uh, live Newspeak widgets when the web page starts up. And so it's applicable to all kinds of settings, including uh, the setting here where, where the, the whole presentation manager is running uh, as a web application in the DOM, and you can uh, basically uh, replace that there. Uh, you don't have to do it that way. You can do it, for example, with regular web pages. This is a blog page that was created uh, with a different tool. The presentation was created with Lounge. This was created with Madoko, which is a system that Dan Lyon uh, built at uh, Microsoft Research. But you can see the same familiar uh, screen here, right, with the same application. And here's an, uh, here's an example of an evaluator again that's live, and it operates exactly as you'd expect. And that uh, was created with Madoko. Uh, this is Madoko right here. This is the source for this thing, which is in Madoko. It's a it's a markup language that is kind of a mix of Markdown and LaTeX and a embedded HTML. It's very practical and and does a pretty good job of taking care of of most of your needs. And so that's that's another fundamental facet of this whole. A fundamental question about how you do these live literate setups. Do you embed widgets in a WYSIWYG editor? Do you embed them in a in some sort of markup language like this that can create these widgets and gives you more control? There are different trade-offs. Uh, the presentation here was done with Lounge, which is uses org mode as the underlying uh, markup that defines what these slides look like. And uh, in contrast, uh, this web page here was done with Madoko that uses its own mix and you can do it with other other things uh, depending you know what what kind of setup you want to uh, to craft so that gives us a quick overview of how uh, Ampleforth works and uh, there's still a lot of room for improvement here because in fact uh, we haven't integrated the, the text editors in a way that lets us embed, uh, you know, such such rich documents recursively. So if I if I go and look at uh, one of these uh, classes, right, I can't actually put an Ampleforth or rather a, a Lounge editor, for example, or a Madoko editor embedded in this text editor that shows me the colorized method. Uh, that's something we need to work on and improve because the, the right architecture would let you do that uh, recursively ad infinitum. And hopefully we'll have some version of that uh, that works similarly to the StrongTalk example very soon. Uh, this is, of course, an environment that needs a lot of, of work to, to reach the sophistication of the Smalltalk-based Newspeak environment. Uh, we don't have exemplar mode working at all, for example. Uh, but it's a start, and I hope that uh, we can create a really nice uh, live literate programming environment from this as uh, we move forward.